Spatial Reuse with Color Codes is a 11AX feature called BSS Color, which is an identifier that is attached to each PHY header to indicate what wireless LAN it came from. Its purpose is to increase capacity in a dense environment with an increase of frequency reuse between basic service sets or BSSs or those sharing the same SSID. Legacy high-density Wi-Fi deployments typically have multiple access points assigned to the same transmission channels due to a limited amount of spectrum, which is an inefficient paradigm that contributes to network congestion and slowdowns. In addition, legacy 802.11 devices are unable to effectively communicate and negotiate with each other to maximize channel resources. 11AX access points are designed to optimize the efficient reuse of spectrum in dense deployment scenarios using a range of techniques including BSS coloring. This slide is an analogy to describe spatial reuse using BSS coloring. In a school, we have a rule that only one person talks at a time in a classroom to maintain order. Either the teacher talks or one of the students talk. If one student starts talking, all the other students stay silent. This is what Wi-Fi does. Only one person, client or AP, talks at a time. In the real world, each client is doing a random back off to see who gets to talk, and at times there are collisions and everyone must start over. In a school, we don't tell our students that only one person talks in a school. If someone in the next door classroom or faraway classroom talks, we don't tell them to be silent. We may hear some muffled sounds, but we have walls separating classrooms, so the audio from the adjacent classrooms are low and don't cause interference. However, we don't tell this to our access points. The 802.11 standard tells our APs that if you hear anyone else talking on the same channel, you stay quiet as only one client talks at a time. In our analogy, an AP in a room may pick up a low-level signal coming from another faraway classroom on the same channel, and it must stay quiet. We don't tell the AP that if you hear anyone in this classroom, then stay quiet, but if you hear someone from another classroom, then don't stay quiet. So applying this analogy, today we are telling our APs only one person talks in a school, while we could have told them that only one person talks in a classroom. We must give the AP a means to figure out whether that person is talking inside the classroom or in another classroom in the school. That's where the concept of BSS coloring comes in. In this slide, there are two APs operating in a building. Both are on channel 36, so they are both in the same BSS or SSID. One is in one classroom and another AP is at the other end of the building. I'll assign the AP on the right a color of red and the AP on the other end of the building orange. Every client that is associated to the red AP also gets the color red. In our previous analogy, this is like saying every student sitting in a classroom is a red student. The other classroom has orange students. Before you speak, you must tell your color what classroom you're in, and before someone talks, they listen to see if anyone else is talking. If you are in the red classroom and another red client is talking, you stay quiet. If I hear someone but their color is orange, I know they are far away. Essentially, I stomp on that signal. In our example, the spatial reuse channel access rules are, is a transmission detected? If yes, you ask, are you the same color, meaning are you in the same BSS? If yes, you treat the medium as busy as the frame is considered an intra-BSS transmission and the listening radio will defer transmission. This is how today's networks behave. If the color is different, then the frame is considered an inter-BSS or IBSS transmission from an overlapping basic service set or OBSS and the listening radio treats the medium as busy only for the time it took to determine the color bit was different. Next, you ask if the RSSI signal is greater than the alternative signal detected. For example, is it greater than a minus 62 dBm? If yes, then you treat the medium as busy and defer transmission. If no, this means the signal is weak and you ignore the frame and start transmitting. Since both APs are on the same channel, this technology improves spatial reuse efficiency and performance. Let's show this in a little different perspective. How do we deal with overlapping BSS or OBSS in dense deployments? The current method is to defer. Today, we typically drop everything down to 20 MHz to minimize reuse. This caps your network capacity of 20 MHz per BSS. If you multiply that by your maximum data rate, you can figure your maximum capacity. So how do you increase the capacity? If you go to 40 or 80 MHz and you're using 5 GHz, you have to drop down to 4 or 5 channels. We're showing 4 here. This gives you a four times increase in your network capacity from a raw spectrum calculation. 
But in a dense environment, you'll be blocked by all these small BSS sizes. You'll hear all these other BSSs, so you're going to defer for all of them. In the best case, you'll just be back down to a 20 MHz capacity because you're using a quarter of the airtime. In the worst case, you'll have collisions between all the co-channel and co-frequencies in the BSSs, and you can end up worse than if you were just using 20 MHz. That's why designers for stadiums or large conference rooms typically pick the smaller bandwidth and minimum reuse. So how do we address this? In 802.11ah, they were trying to figure out how to manage co-channel interference differently than the typical deferral. 11ah introduced a scheme called BSS coloring, so you can assign a different color identifier for BSSs and distinguish between co-channel BSSs. There are 64 levels of color, bits 0 through 7. Frames from neighboring BSSs can be treated differently when assessing channel availability. With coloring, you view all the co-channel BSSs, all these ones in our diagram, as not your BSS. So now you can have different rules based on the detection of transmission from those BSSs. So let's take another look at some spatial reuse channel access rules. As a receiver, which can be an AP or client, you receive the signal. And we'll talk in 20 MHz numbers. Is it equal to or greater than the CCA threshold of, say, minus 82 dBm? If the answer is yes, did you decode the physical layer convergence protocol preamble properly? If yes, it's an 802.11 packet, and it's greater than our minus 82 dBm threshold. The next step was added in 11AH. We ask, is it the same color? If yes, then it's another client in your BSS that's transmitting, so you will defer transmitting. If it's not your color, then it's from an overlapping BSS. So now you can say rather than a minus 82 dBm, maybe I'll do a detection level of minus 62 dBm with the signal coming in at minus 72 dBm. Since it's below my threshold, I can treat it as if it didn't occur and stomp on it and transmit. So what advantage does this give us? If you're in a dense deployment and you're close to an AP and you've got a 40 dB signal to noise ratio, maybe you can handle a little interference. If you take a 50% hit on your modulation coding, you're still getting a big net capacity increase in your system. That's the goal and technique, and 11AX will allow us to adjust our detection level to have an adjustable signal detect level. The actual level will depend upon your deployment. You can set any signal you want as it is programmable. As more deployments are done, best practices for levels will be determined. It's going to be adaptive. Using adaptive clear channel assessment, an 802.11ax radio can raise the signal detects threshold for intra-BSS frames while maintaining a lower threshold for intra-BSS frames. BSS coloring can thus potentially decrease the channel contention problem that is symptomatic of existing low signal detection thresholds.